Why did God abandon his temple? Hundreds of years after Solomon finished building the first temple in 1 Kings chapter 7, Nebuchadnezzar destroyed it and deported the Jews to Babylon during his invasion of Judah in 2 Kings chapter 25 verse 9. Naturally, this was a traumatic event for them, and a whole book, Lamentations, was written to lament the situation. After years of exile, Zerubbabel would rebuild it in Ezra, but this too was knocked down when the Jews rebelled against Roman rule in the first century. The construction of Islamic religious structures during the 7th century put an end to any hopes that the temple would be rebuilt, and today, the successful rebuilding of the third temple is, well, probably not going to happen anytime soon. However, a pretty obvious question is raised. Why would God let his house be wrecked two times? After all, as Solomon said, And the Lord said unto David my father, Whereas it was in thine heart to build a house unto my name, thou didst well that it was in thine heart. Nevertheless thou shalt not build the house, but thy son that shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house unto my name. How could all those sanctified objects be destroyed by pagans? Well, the first reason Jehovah allowed this to happen is because the temple was merely a symbol of his presence, just like the cloud in Exodus chapter 13 verses 21 to 22. It would only remind the Israelites that God was watching them. The idea was that a centralized place of worship would keep the Israelites focused on Yahweh, unlike in the time of the judges, when people would simply do whatever they wanted, including serving other deities. Thus, when people continued violating God's law after Solomon's death, the temple wasn't serving any purpose. It was now corrupt, according to Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 6 to 18. And since God couldn't be present in a corrupt environment, he had no reason to preserve it. As he said through Jeremiah, Mine heritage is unto me as a lion in the forest. It crieth out against me. Therefore have I hated it. Jeremiah chapter 12 verse 8. In fact, he wanted to sabotage it, according to Isaiah chapter 5 verses 1 to 7. This same reasoning applies to the destruction of the temple in the time of Christ. Instead of preserving its sanctity by following the laws of God, the elders were persecuting righteous people to maintain power. Jesus told them, Wherefore, behold, I send unto you prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city. Matthew chapter 23 verse 34. They did all this not knowing that their own persecution would come, according to Luke chapter 19 verses 43 to 44. Remember the parable of the husbandman in Matthew chapter 21 verses 33 to 41? The landlord was so lenient with his workers that he gave them a second chance after they murdered some of his servants, who were just collecting his crops. However, when they killed his son, they crossed the red line. He had them killed and replaced them with others. Because obviously, their service was no longer useful. Another reason that God allowed the temple to be destroyed was that it actually wasn't the most important part of worshipping him. An individual's heart was. God also said through Jeremiah, I the Lord search the heart, I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Jeremiah chapter 17 verse 10. Jehovah can create a million temples, but he can't create sincere voluntary worship, by definition, making it so much more valuable. Plus, the kind of worship that the Israelites were performing, which was holy on the outside but sinful on the inside, wasn't just useless. It actually soiled his name. As it was said in Isaiah, For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Isaiah chapter 48 verse 11. Thus, oddly enough, God let his house be destroyed to maintain his good reputation. Of course, it wasn't just the Israelites who needed to learn something from this. All these morals apply to us as well, since we are God's temple in the last days. As St. Paul said, What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? 
1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. It is only when we are sanctified that God will be able to inhabit our temple and Jesus will be able to serve within it. To conclude, let's hear what Paul had to say. In union with him, you two are being built together with all the others into a place where God lives through his spirit. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 22 according to the Good News Bible. And that is where I'm going to stop with this Bible Q&A. Why did God abandon his temple? He abandoned it because it was supposed to be a symbol of his presence, and it wasn't serving that purpose anymore, and also because what really mattered to God was the heart of the individual worshipping him. Thank you for listening! Don't forget to like and subscribe!